let's take a look at what we'll be building today. We'll start with a simple graph where a single developer node will be connected to start and end nodes. The state graph will be created with a type dict and have a single entry point and an edge to the end node. It will consist of a single key count, which will be an integer with an initial value of zero. The developer node will increment the count by one and return the state, in effect overriding it. We will add memory to the graph to save the state of the graph and be able to retrieve it later. Then we'll create a visualization using Mermaid. And finally, we'll run the loop by taking the user input in running our chatbot. So let's get started. First, we're going to import our libraries. For this, we're going to use three libraries. We're going to use type dict, state graph, and checkpoint memory for memory saver. Next, let's define our state. The state definition in this case is very simple. We use the graph state class by passing a type dict with a single key count of type integer. Now let's create our graph, okay? So builder is equal to state graph, and here we're passing the graph state object that we created earlier. Now let's create our developer node. This will be the only node in this graph apart from start and end. It will print developer, then it will increment the count by one, and then it will return the state, in effect overriding this count with the new count. Now let's add the node to the graph. Okay, and that's a single command, which is add node developer with the name and passing our object, which is the actual node here. Now we need to set the start and end points of our graph. And that's done by add edges method, specifying the start and the end. So it starts from start, goes to developer, then from developer to end. Now let's add configuration and memory. This is purely optional, but we need it in order to be able to retrieve the state of the graph at any point outside of any of the nodes. So if you like to have access to the state of the graph outside of the nodes, then you would likely have to pass the memory as a config, the config and the memory while compiling the graph. Now let's compile our graph. And now we're going to pass the check pointer and pass our memory object as a memory saver. In a later example, I'll show you how to persist the state of the graph into a database. But for this example, we'll keep the state in memory. Okay, here we're building and compiling the graph. Then we're passing the inputs with this counts of zero. Then we're invoking the graph with this initial value and the config. And then we're printing the initial results. Now let's get a visualization of our graph. We do that by using the draw mermaid PNG method. And finally, we can execute our loop. So this is a very simple while loop and it expects user input, although we don't use the user input here apart from quitting. In this case, we are just getting the count from the current state. And this is where config becomes important. And then we are invoking the graph with this count expecting it to get incremented by one and then printing the results. Something important here is this config. It's configurable and then there is a hash here, thread ID of one. Now these thread IDs are important as you'll see later. And this one is an arbitrary number. You can pass any number you like, but this is how LangGraph differentiates different conversational threads. And in this case, we have only one thread, but in the future, when you start persisting this to the database, then you will likely auto-generate these IDs and then refer to them when the user needs to load a conversation from the database by its thread ID. For now, thread ID of one is perfectly fine for this example, but just be aware that these define the conversations both in memory, but also in the database later on. So we have our file now and let's review one more time what we did. We imported our classes, we defined our state, we created the graph using this graph state object. Then we created a single node basically a Python function that takes state as a parameter. It makes some changes to the state and overrides it in effect. Then we added this node to the graph. Then we set start endpoints and the transition, which is the developer node. Then we added configuration and memory in order to be able to retrieve the state outside of a node. Then we compiled the state and then ran the first invocation with the initial inputs and the configuration object. Then we printed them. Then we create a picture of our graph. And finally, we enter a loop where the user can exit anytime by hitting Q or quit. And if they keep pressing enter, the count gets incremented by one. Let's save our file. And now let's run our file as well. I'm going to open the built-in terminal and just type python state.py. As expected, the initial count is one. And in this folder, we got an image generated Generated. So let's take a look at our picture first. As you can see, we have the start node, 
we have a developer node and we have an end node. Not much happening here. Obviously, the simplest of graphs. In future examples, this will get a lot more complicated when you start adding more nodes, as well as edges and conditional edges and loops. But for now, this is a, a simple way to demonstrate the state and the simplest of states. So it starts with the start node, goes into the developer, developer increment state count by one, then it ends. So let's take a look at this. So we already have the count at one. And here you can type something or you can just hit enter. And then as you can see, the graph gets executed one more time and now count is two. If you keep pressing enter, the count gets incremented and the graph keeps running. This is a very simple example, which demonstrates a way to create a state object with a single key of integer that's being overridden in each execution. In future examples, we'll add more details into the state graph object, but this would be a good starting point to experiment with. And so you can add more keys to the state. Um, you can add other keys. You can experiment with overriding this in a node or an additional node or multiplying it or creating other variables here. But this is the simplest of examples to get us started. Okay, so that concludes the demo here. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. In a short amount of time, we've managed to look at a starter example of how to work with the line graph state object. Now that you're starting to understand state, go ahead and do more reading on line graph site. And in the meantime, future videos will bring more sophisticated uses of state graph. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and you learned something new. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Please let me know in the comment section what topics are of interest to you and I will try to make a video for them. Thank you for watching.